Hello, everyone. Michael Anfield here. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget, visit weareinterconnected.com for my books, articles, and much more. Okay, so today's video is on veganic farming and why it's so important to be growing our foods veganically. So, as you can probably tell, majority of the foods still in supermarkets are conventionally grown so they have pesticides and chemicals and manure and who knows what and even organically grown foods we don't know if they're truly organic or not okay and they're still putting on the crops they're still spraying manure they're still spraying they may spray they may spray uh, blood meal and feather meal and fish meal and who knows what else so we don't really know what, what we're eating no matter how well we wash it we don't know what we're eating and so if we don't grow our own food then we really don't know what we're eating fruits are by far fruits and vegetables are by far the best the most healthiest foods on the earth yes fruits being number one because they have the highest content of water and they have the highest content uh, of vitamin C and other nutrients that we need for our bodies antioxidants uh, you name it just a load of amazing properties and I feel personally my best when I'm eating all fruit, or at least majority of my calories from fruit. So, what is the difference between veganic and other methods of farming? Well, veganic means that you don't uh, incorporate any domesticated animals onto the land or any animal inputs, like, again, like manure, blood meal, fish meal, feather meal, etc., and bone meal, etc. And we understand that we want to we want to eat pure food now if a wild animal a free roaming natural free roaming animal wants to poop somewhere in the garden that's fine because that is nature that is nature we're not introducing domesticated animals when we incorporate manure or any of any um, animal input into the land we don't know what kind of pathogens the fecal matter is harboring and so we don't know if there's e coli or salmonella or whatever and even if we have our own animals on the land we are depending on other animals other beings which we enslave even if they're running around and they're so happy and everything you know in the end their lives are cut short because when their production declines we no longer need them I mean, they're taking up space and we want to eat their eggs and we want to do this and we want to do that. So, no matter where we get our, 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 our animal inputs from, if it's manure, manure, or if it's from, or if it's uh, having uh, hens for their eggs, whatever, we're still dependent on animals and it's an enslavement. We will never be free as long as we enslave animals. So, veganic yields more food veganic tastes better i noticed the difference when when i grow veganically and also when we create the perfect soil for the plants to grow in then we create the best tasting the best quality food and people say, well, you need this and you need that and you need manure and you need this and blah, 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 blah. all this justification for using animal inputs. So for fertilizer, you would use compost. So all your all your fruit and vegetable scraps. And of course, you would have a compost and you would wait six to six months to a year, uh, keep churning it uh, until yeah and then you incorporate also human or human manure you incorporate you mix it all in 
you can create or make a very simple um, compostable toilet. So you don't need to buy a compostable toilet. You can make your own compostable toilet. And uh, basically, uh, just have a bucket, three pieces of wood, and that's basically it. Okay? Very simple. When you poop into the bucket, just put sawdust so it doesn't smell. Uh, most people or all, everyone who's eating just fruits or at least vegan uh, with very minimal processed, they, their excrement usually never, never smells or if it does, very minimal. So do you use a compost to mix it all together, the compost and the uh, humanure and you have urine. So you urinate into a bottle and once or twice a week, you dump that out onto the plants. Uh, there's a ratio of, of urine and water that you need to put into that bucket. And I found that about three quarters urine to quarter quarter um, water in the bucket is is a, is a good ratio but you can experiment with that uh, some people have found that um, half and half works good some people find 25% urine and 75% water works good so it depends on what are you eating if you're eating organically if you're eating um, a lot of fruit, so you're getting a lot of water into your diet through the foods that you're eating, then your urine will be more clear. Okay, if you're eating a lot of cooked foods and eating a lot of processed foods, then of course you want to add more water. Because every time you eat cooked foods, you're gaining more acidity in your body cooked foods leads to acidity so you pour that bucket right onto the plants directly onto the plants uh, directly onto the plants into the soil and that's it making sure of course the soil is not hard so it's like aerated and uh, that's it like you mix in basically the compost with your humanure but also mix in some leaves mix in some twigs mix in a little bit of um, uh, wood chips mix in uh, a little bit of grass but not weeds mix in um, what else do you mix in some soil uh, a lot of just generally mixing all those things in to get a an excellent compost so at least six months until the soil is dark black and I would recommend creating two or three different composts okay and using one and then keep rotating each each one okay and then you just put that on your plants you mix it in with the soil and put it in, put it in there so you might want to create this compost basically before you start actually planting okay so that's what you want you want to do that before you start planting so that you get the compost underneath the ground like right in the ground you don't want it on top you want it inside everywhere so you want the soil so let's say you have a plant in, in the ground so you want to take the plant out if it's a small plant still take the plant out and actually dig a hole and put the compost inside there with the plant. So making sure the roots have the compost as well. Okay. Well, compost plus the mixture of the soil and twigs and, and grass and, and so forth. Okay. And of course, humanure. And then from there, uh, you got the perfect recipe for soil perfect recipe for soil okay it's veganic it has all the nutrients there 
put back because you have all the compost, you have all the humanure, you have the uh, urine and all that. So every plant that you have there, every tree that you have there should get this treatment of the urine, should get the treatment of the, of the compost, the whole soil composition compost. Um, and the urine, especially with young plants or plants that you just put in the seed and also plants that are dying or might be dying, or look like they're dying. So, I think that's about it for... Oh, one other thing about veganic and gardening is that people ask me, well, do you, do you garden during certain periods, during the certain periods of the moon, or do you follow that uh, system? planting in different moon cycles or during certain moon cycles? And the answer is no. The one thing that I want to recommend people or one tip I want to give is if you're living somewhere where there's only two seasons, where it's wet and dry, you want to plant basically in the early wet season. Okay, early wet season you want to start planting. Or basically any time during during the wet season, uh, during well not any time but like the beginning or the middle of the wet season, because if you're planting from seed or you're planting a small small little plant, you want to make sure that you get enough water. And and usually during the wet, uh, dry season, there's you're not going to be watering often unless you have you know water source close to you. But uh, that's what you basically want to do is plant mainly during the wet season, early, preferably, but middle is fine too. And I think that's about it. So if you have any questions, do contact me. I usually don't check the, the comments down below, but um, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this session. Please don't forget to visit my website, weareinterconnected.com for books. I have uh, two books for free. Uh, just before I go, I want to just mention two things, and that is website weareinterconnected.com. I am going to be updating that, and creating a new one. And secondly, uh, my new book that came out last year, How to Create the Perfect Vegan Life, that one I'm going to try to get into paperback version and Our Path to Freedom. Please do read it. That's my newest book that should be out this year. I love you all. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.